Hi YouTube, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another review of Merit at First Sight, Season 13, Episode 14, Country Chaos and how chaotic it was. So, but first of all, I want to mention that who would have thought that Merlin and Gil would have been like the breakout couple, the couple that, you know, <laughs> was doing so, so well because when we first met Merla, I know I felt like there's just no way this is going to work out. Whoever they match her with, there's just no way it's going to work out. But her and Gil, it seems like they are really putting in the work. And they are, like, just succeeding by leaps and bounds above the rest. Um, with Rachel and Jose coming in a really close second. But who would have thought that it would have, that Merla would have been in a, in a, in a couple where things are actually working out better than almost everybody else. So it starts off with Bao and Johnny. They're getting ready. Oh, so the whole thing about this episode is that everybody's going to be going on a couple's retreat to Brenham, Texas, and they're all going to be staying in this. Um, it's actually like a barn house. I think it's called like a, it's like a red barn house or barnyard. A barn house and it's been converted into like I guess a, like a really cute western styled uh b and b so Bao and John are getting ready. Bao says that she's really excited about the trip, not because of spending more time with Johnny. She just wants to spend time with everybody else but Johnny. Zach and Michaela. Um, so Michaela ended up moving out that night that they had their huge fight. She actually moved out. And um, this is the first time that her and Zach have seen each other since she left. So they're going to be heading over there together because it seems like uh, they talked about it. Um, uh, Michaela moved out, but they're, they decided that they were going to move on. They said, Zach said that they talked and they're going to just, you know, put it all behind them and they're going to move forward. Brett and Ryan, they're driving to the ranch. They're on their way to the ranch and Brett brings up the conversation that she had with Ryan's sister and she tells Ryan that, um, she was telling the sister that ever since they came back from the honeymoon, there seemed to have been like this like automatic switch in him. I mean, like literally he went from day to night really, really quick and with no explanation, with no nothing. And so the sister said, well, it seems like because, you know, she knows her own brother so, so well. She told Brett that maybe, you know, he's distracted by someone else. And so, you know, Ryan looked... Like, he was really confused about this. He either looked confused or it looked like he got caught. Like, he, you know, he didn't think that maybe his sister would tell so much. I don't know. And um, Brett says, it seems like, you know, everybody knows so much about what's going on with you except me because we don't communicate. And Ryan was like, what, what else are you hearing? Like, what are you being told? I have told you everything. I told you that I'm struggling with the feelings that I'm having, that I'm not at that point where I'm supposed to be with you. And um, yeah, there's nothing else other than that. And so he got really defensive. Um, Ryan... Brett was trying to tell him, you know, to not be so defensive and to relax, so on and so forth. Jose and Rachel, they're excited about the trip. And basically, Rachel said that, yeah, she's happy to see everybody, but she really just wants to spend more time with her husband and reconnect with her husband. Now, as soon as they get to the ranch, so the couples are arriving at the ranch, and I think Merla and Gil are one of the first couples there, and automatically, you know, right off the bat, Merla starts complaining about the accommodations. Now, this is a really nice setup. You know, it's really nice. It's huge. It's spacious. Like, it was a barn that was converted into a and b so there's, like, a lot of space in there. But, um, yeah, Merla's not happy. She tells Gil that she wanted her own accommodation. She wanted to have her own cabin separate from everybody else. Now, Merla is the true introvert and I kind of relate to her in that way you know she is so I Marla comes she has like a a special place in my heart because I am seriously an introvert and I, I relate to Marla in that way I don't relate in her being a negative Nancy all the time complaining about everything but I do relate to her with not wanting to be around people Zach and Michaela are taking a walk I thought they were taking a walk they had arrived at the ranch, 
but they hadn't gone inside yet. I think they were outside just walking on their own. And um, they were having a conversation. Um, they were talking about how they need to figure out how to talk to each other, how to communicate better. Michaela says that she's figuring, figuring out what her triggers are, what her triggers are, because they were talking about their fight. And so she needs to like understand the things that are going to trigger her, I guess, and try to deal with them be better. And Zach was saying that if they're sleeping in the same Zach asks if they're going to sleep in the same bed on this couple's getaway. And Michaela was like, yeah, sure, why not? Why wouldn't we? And um, no, Michaela says, why do you ask? That's what she says. She says, well, why do you ask? And um, Zach says, because it's going to be fun like it always is. So we understand why he, you know, likes to share a bed with Michaela. Brett and Ryan. Oh, yeah, I think we talked about Brett and Ryan. Moving on from them. Okay, so now we are at the ranch. Everybody's hanging out. Everybody's having a good time. Bao's cooking dinner. Um, everyone is sitting. I think, what did she cook? Who knows and who cares? So they're all sitting at the dinner table. They're all talking about, you know, what's going on with their relationship. Um, Gil made a joke that him and Merla were going to get a divorce, but that was just a joke. Everybody laughed. And, um... Brett, no, Ryan talked about, Brett and Ryan talked about their issues and how they're struggling. And um, I think it was Bao that told Ryan, you know, or was it Brett? Oh, so I think it was, I don't, somebody told Ryan, like, you know, it's okay for struggling. You know, it, it doesn't matter. We're all going through it. You Don't be ashamed of it. Don't worry about it. It's okay for struggling. And um, Johnny, you know, avoid, of course, he always has to, voice his opinion um he says that things have been kind of bumpy between him and bow and while everyone is talking about where they are with their relationship bow is extremely quiet bow isn't talking at all and um she just seems so withdrawn and so um deflated and like there's no life in her and all I can think of when I was watching Bao sitting at that dinner table with everyone else being so chatty was that you know Johnny has really broken her down Johnny has really really changed her and not for the better so then um later on they're all at the bonfire or the fire pit they're all gathered around um they present a gift to Brett because of her dog uh Baxter passing away so they give her and I think it was a box of cookies that were shaped like doggy bones with his name on it on white icing and it was you know cookies for humans to consume but they look like doggy treats it was cute they look like doggy treats but they're regular cookies for humans to consume then they all light sparklers for Baxter and Brett had mentioned, you know, she did tell everybody how she appreciated everybody reaching out to her when her dog died, that um, even if it was just like a little quick text to check on her, it still meant a lot to her, you know, because for a lot of people who are pet owners, you know, losing a dog is like losing someone in your family. And it's a very emotional and traumatic time for a lot of people. So it was nice that the, these people, this group of people that don't really know each other that well, were able to... Um, you know, to think of her and help her get through this really tough time because, you know, she probably couldn't deal with it the way she would normally deal with it if she wasn't on the show. And so it was nice that the cast, the other cast members on the show were doing whatever they could to try to help her out. And that was really sweet of them. So then everyone as everyone leaves to go to sleep except for the troubled couples, couples, which are Johnny and Bao, Brett and Ryan. So as these two couples are still sitting outside at the bonfire or at the fire pit, um, they start talking about sleeping arrangements. Now, Ryan just kind of threw it out there that him and Brett, he was going to, you know, share a bedroom with Brett. And Brett kind of was like, mm, yeah, I don't think so. Because of the fact that, you know, at home, Ryan had decided not to share a room with her. He moved out into the second bedroom. So... Brett is kind of like, well, <laughs> why would you want to sleep with me here when you don't, we don't even share a room at the house? And Ryan was like taken aback by that. He was kind of like, uh, you know, he wasn't expecting that. He just assumes, I think 
Ryan thinks that Brett is more into him than he is into her and that she's just waiting on the sidelines, just waiting for him to, you know, come around and, you know, start loving her. And so he thinks that she would have just jumped at the opportunity of them sharing a bedroom together. So he was kind of like, oh, so we're not going to share. And she was like, no, we're not going to share a room. So then they try to figure out, you know, how's this going to go? Now, Johnny doesn't want to share a room at all with Bao. He says, well, according to Bao, this is what Bao said in her confessional, that um, Johnny is working on building a foundation for their marriage. And I guess in Johnny's warped mind, building a foundation means we're going to sleep in separate rooms. We're going to do, we're going to act like anything and everything other than husband and wife. And that's how we're going to build our marriage. That makes a lot of sense. Bao's not happy about it, but you know, you know, the experts told her, hey, just go with the flow, whatever he wants, just go ahead and give in. Ryan and Johnny, okay, so they decide that Ryan and, no, Ryan and Johnny are not going to share a room. Um, they, they actually ended up doing rock, paper, scissors to see who's going to get the bedroom and who's going to sleep on the couch. And Johnny won, Ryan lost. And um, I guess that would mean that, that, uh, Bao and Brett shared a room. Okay. And Johnny even said that he wanted to spend, he said this in his confessional, which is so, so awful. He said that he wanted to spend as little time with Bao as possible. That's awful. Like, why do you dislike this? For I keep on saying this, that the only reason that I think that Johnny would have this much animosity and disgust towards Bao is because either he has someone else on his mind or he is like just very repulsed by her because she doesn't shower as often as he does. He's like, you know, he thinks that he thinks that she's really, really germy or something. I don't, she has done absolutely nothing. Now, there have been couples on this show where they're this repulsed with each other or one is really repulsed by the other. And it kind of made sense, you know, why someone would be so disgruntled by their spouse and not want to have anything to do with them. But in this situation, Bao has done absolutely nothing to deserve this kind of reaction from Johnny. She's done absolutely nothing. And I feel so bad for her because she's extremely sweet and she's so patient with him. And she always tries to somehow keep a positive attitude while this guy is treating her like, you know, like garbage. And she doesn't deserve to be treated like this. And he's not any, no one should treat anyone like this. And he definitely is not in a position to treat anyone like this. Because, you know, who are you? You're not a multimillionaire. You're not, you know, you're not some, you know, big time Hollywood actor. Who are you to look down and talk down to someone who has got as much going on for them as Bao? And so I'm just like, why are these couples making it so much harder than it has to be? You know, you would think that they could take a break from their hate just for these, you know, few hours that they are at this ranch. Okay, so let's see what's happening here. Oh, okay, so the next day, they're all having a good time. They're playing, um, I think it's called Cornhusk. Some of the couples are playing Cornhusk, I think. Um, so they're all having a good time. They're all hanging out. Then there comes a time when the girls, you know, break off and the boys break off. And um, Michaela tells the girls that her and Zach are in a really good place right now. Um, and then Zach tells the guys about the fight that he had with Michaela and why Michaela had moved out. Um, Bao admits that she is envious of the other relationships that are going well because she wishes that she could have the same thing, you know, and take full, full advantage of this experience. But Johnny's not making it possible. Brett says that she gives all, Brett tells the girls that when she gives all of herself because she was relaying to them the issues that her and um, Ryan are having. And she says that when she really tries hard with someone and she gives all of herself to someone and she's vulnerable and she's, you know, um, 
just putting in a lot of work and a lot of effort and making it work and the other person basically like rejects her and just is like oh i'm not really feeling it and i need my space from you she says when that happens she checks out and she's probably gonna stay in that mindset she says you know what i have completely checked out because when he distanced himself from me i was like i'm done okay and uh so ryan and brett so Ryan tells the guys, I guess, that, um, you know, Brett didn't want to share a bedroom with him at the ranch. And I guess, you know, he expresses how he was really taken aback by that because he says, you know, we're here to try to, you know, build our relationship and we're, we need to put in the effort, but she wouldn't even sleep in the same room with me. And um, somebody asked him, and I think it was Zach, so if y'all don't sleep in the same room at home, what difference is it if y'all don't sleep in the same room here? That was sort of a good question. Like, you know, why is this affecting you if this is your everyday life, you know, back in Houston? Why are you so like, oh my gosh, you won't even share a room with me here? And Brett, I mean, Ryan didn't really know how to answer. And I wish I could have answered for him because the perfect answer to Zach's question would have been, well, we're here trying to build we're trying to start over we're trying to you know uh put in the effort trying to make it work and so we've got to do something different we can't do what we've been doing and expect a different result so she should have um wanted she should have shared a room with me because we're here trying to we're here to try to do something different um to improve our relationship so that's why she should have been in the room with me instead of just you know having this really dumb look on his face like he didn't had he had like had no idea what to say um bow is really mad at johnny and she tells the other girls yeah I, you know i'm really angry at him because of the fact of how he's treating her he's treating her like garbage johnny acts like and, and then that's another thing I, I think you know johnny is extremely in my eyes he's very very immature and whenever he t whenever there are whenever they are around other the other couples him and bow he never misses an opportunity to talk about how horrible things are going with bow he's always mentioning that you know how they're struggling they have problems and it's not working and also i feel like he kind of enjoys being mean to her he likes to say things that are going to hurt her and the reason why i say he likes to say them is because he says them he says the, he says things in front of other people that are i would think are really really hurtful um i don't even recall him ever saying anything nice or positive about his relationship with bow to the other people and then like i said whenever he's in a group setting he likes to talk about how horrible things are with bow and let's not forget what happened at the crawfish boil with his family you know how he talked really bad about her there and i'm glad that his family wasn't you know taking the bait because you know that could have gone so bad um bow realizes that she is uh, so bow was telling the girls about her parents' relationship. Now, this was deep to me. She was telling the girls, you know, that her parents have been married for 50 years. And um, I, I always wonder with marriages that last that long, like, um, are they, especially when the couple seems really happy with each other, like, I've always wondered, people who've been married 20 years plus, like, has it i mean and then you hear these older couples say things like oh you know we've lasted so long because we always communicate or we've lasted so long because we never go to bed we never go to bed angry at each other oh we've lasted so long because you know we're really we've learned you know not just to be husband and wife but it's important to be friends you know they give this beautiful flowery you know rainbows and butterflies type of advice and i always wonder it's like so y'all have never gone through you know the hell and the, the the tribulations or trials and tribulations of marriage y'all have never been in the gutter with your marriage y'all have never like hated each other been on the verge of a divorce um cussed each other i mean that y'all have never experienced that so bow says her parents have been married for 50 years and their marriage is really good now but she says when she was younger their marriage was in a really dark place she says that her father uh, she remembers as a child her father being very verbally abused 
abusive to her mother. And she says it got even darker than that. So I'm, I'm, I don't want to put words in her mouth, but it made me assume, just an assumption, that maybe he was also physically abusive to her. And um, But she stayed. And Bao said that she knew, you know, when she became older, that she was like, I will never be in that situation where I stay with someone who doesn't appreciate me. And she says, but she sees herself repeating what she saw in her mother. She sees herself doing those same things. You know, she's in a relationship with someone who absolutely doesn't appreciate her. And she's realizing that now. And, you know, that's a, you know, a horrible realization, a horrible truth to come true, a horrible fact to face. Okay. So moving on from that, Gil and Marla, they go horseback riding and uh, I'm so glad nobody got hurt. Whenever I see people horseback riding, oh my God, I just started assuming the worst <laughs> because I can think of two tragedies. Well, not tragedies, but one definite tra tragedy, obviously Christopher Reeves when he fell off the horse and became paralyzed. And then, um, on a slightly lighter note, um, on the Real Housewives of New York when, um, oh, it wasn't even a horse. Was it a horse? Someone got, someone got flung off a horse on the Real Housewives of Oh, I think it was uh, Sonia. It was Sonia who got flung off a horse and it was Luann who got flung off a camel. <laughs> she didn't get flung off a camel, but she got on a camel and um, I guess the, the camel was going too fast or something and Luann was just like flopping around on this camel's hump. It was so funny. So uh, Gail and Marla, they're horseback riding. And of course, you know, after she's complaining the whole time and then when they're done with the horseback riding and they sit down to talk, you know, she starts complaining about the horseback riding. And she even said she loves horseback riding. She grew up around horses. Um, I think she said her mother came from like a rural area in Mexico. And so she's used to, and I think her family has a ranch in Texas, I think. So she's used to this whole ranch life and animals and horses. And she enjoys horseback riding, but here she is complaining about horseback riding. So Gil is just like, are you ever satisfied with anything and in his confessional he says that whenever she's having fun she's not having fun and I'm beginning to really wonder like what is up with her is this like some type of uh like a psychological type of issue with her you know like why she can never just be so um he, he tells her, you know, are you ever satisfied with anything? And he tells her, you know, you're acting kind of bratty. You're complaining again. You're acting kind of bratty. And I thought that Merlo was going to, like, get right back at him and be like, I know you're not calling me a brat. But instead, she's very accepting of it. And she says, I receive it. I hear you and I receive it. As in, okay, you're calling me out because this is what they had agreed. That whenever she gets like this, he needs to try to nip it in the bud. And so... She she was like, okay, I receive it. And I guess her attitude changed quickly thereafter. And I'm like, wow, Gil, you're like the Merlot whisperer. Now, the troubled couples, they go skeet shooting. Um, your boy Johnny and Bao, Brett and Ryan, they go skeet shooting. Now, Bao and Ryan had a great time. They were out there with the rifles and the the the, the clay things that they have to shoot at. They're having a great time. Now, Brett and Johnny, didn't they wanted no part of it. And I thought, oh, God, y'all can't even try something. This is not even anything dangerous. This is not like parasailing or bungee jumping. You can't even pick up a, a, a an air rifle and skeet shoot. Like, God, Lee, why do y'all even do anything? Why do you even leave your house if you don't even want to try anything? So... Ryan really wanted Brett to join him and this was a that's big because you know he really he's not feeling Brett so he said in his confessional that he really wanted her to join him in the skeet shooting but you know uh, Brett was you know she's scared of the loud noise the, the loud bang of the gun you know the 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 sound that it makes when you shoot it, she was just like not feeling it. And he was like, you know, I wish she would have tried it with me. It would have been a great way for us to bond. Johnny says that he tells uh, Brett that him and Bao just don't know how to trust each other. And they have really bad communication skills with each other. So later on, Brian and Ryan talk. Uh, Brett says that his actions and his words don't match because he says he wants to try harder, but he he's not. And um, Ryan talks about the whole sleeping in different rooms thing. And um, 
in her confessional, I think she said that, you know, Ryan said he wanted to sleep in a different room because he needs his sleep. You know, he blamed it on, you know, some type of issues with the bed or whatever. He needs to have, he needed to sleep by himself. But she says, there's no way that someone can say that to you. You know, your own husband say that to you and you don't take it personally. And you think that, you know, it's got nothing to do with you trying to get sleep. It's got everything to do with you not wanting to be near me and not wanting to share a bed with me. He wants her to call him out on things. And whenever she does, you know, he doesn't accept it. He doesn't receive it. You know, he needs to take notes from Merla and receive it when your spouse calls you out on your BS. And, um, she tells him, Brett tells Ryan that, you know, you kept pushing me away. You kept pushing me away. And finally, I'm, you know, I'm just done. You finally broke me. So you can only push me away so far and I'm just not gonna, I'm not gonna come back. Michaela and Zach. So they're talking outside and this was, um, tropical storm when tropical storm Michaela happened not quite hurricane level but tropical storm Michaela happened Michaela and Zach they're outside talking and um Zach said that he's been pretty consistent and Michaela's the one that's kind of like you know up and down and unpredictable in his confessional Zach says that they decided to get a Wow, this was a shocker to me. In his confessional, he says that him and Michaela had talked about it and they have both decided that they would get a divorce. But they would also come back together again because maybe if they're not under the constraints of marriage, their relationship would thrive. They would have a little bit, feel, I guess, maybe feel a little bit freer because, you know, the whole concept of marriage is like, oh my God, I'm stuck with you for the rest of my life. And there's like more things about you that I, that I don't like than what I do. So maybe if you get rid of that whole thing of we have to stay together no matter what, and it's more loosey goosey and kind of like, let's kind of try this out and see if we're going to work, maybe then it could actually work. So the conversation, the way they talk to each other is very confusing to me because it's like... First of all, they I don't know if they talk really fast or if they're mumbling or what, what's going on, but I can't catch everything that they're saying. So this is the best that I can do. Okay, so they decided to get a divorce and then come back together again. Zach tells her that marriage is not hard. Marriage with Michaela is hard because I think she had said something like, oh my God, this whole, you know, this whole marriage thing is really, really hard. And he was like, no, it's not any harder than what I didn't think it was going to be hard. I didn't expect it to be hard. He goes, marriage is and hard but being married to you is hard and he says it in a way as if he's not being offensive but I thought that was extremely offensive <laughs> because it seems like Michaela wants to be with Zach and that she likes him I mean they said that they loved each other it seems like Michaela has feelings for Zach and when he said you know because marriage is hard. I'm pretty sure the majority of the world will agree. Marriage is very, very hard. So he acknowledges, yeah, marriage can be hard, but I don't think it would be hard. It's only hard with you. And that's like a personal attack on her. And I thought that was like a really... And he said it so cavalier, like in a very cavalier way, like he was just stating facts. He's just stating how he feels and that's all. But it was very hurtful. The effect of it was how it came out was very, 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 very hurtful. And so um, he says that marriage is hard. He says, I, I don't think marriage is hard or it's not as any harder than what I'd expected. It's just really hard with you. It's kind of like when a man says, or, you know, or not a man, but anyone says to their partner, yeah, being a parent can be really, really hard, but you know, I, I, I would love to have children. I would love to be a parent one day and have kids. I just want to have them with you. <laughs> okay. So Zach says that, um, we'll be in a different space when they're not under this whole, you know, umbrella of marriage. Michaela kind of freaks out like, um. Okay, so Michaela, evidently they had talked about it. They came to a decision. We're going to get a divorce, but then we're going to try to date each other. Okay, so Michaela was like, you know, when he told her, I guess, you know, marriage is hard. Mar I don't think marriage is hard. It's just hard with you. Uh, that kind of, you know, it hit her a certain kind of way. And uh, she asked him, do you want to... I don't know exactly what kind of what made her flip like this. 
but when he said that, you know, we'll be, oh, I remember now, this is what she said, this is what she didn't understand. She's like, okay, if you think marriage is so hard with me, why do you want to date me or be with me after we get a divorce? If it's so terrible with me, why do you want to even like spend any time with me after we get a divorce? That's where she was confused. And um, he says, well, if we're not married, it can probably work. And then she says, but I don't understand what the difference will be. You're, I'm still going to be me. Whatever issues you have with me as a wife, you're probably going to have these same issues with me as a girlfriend. I'm still me. I'm still Michaela. I'm not going to change. And that's what got her frustrated because he was like, no, it's going to be different if we're not married. And so then she just kind of flips out and she starts like, waving her hands around and kicking her legs. I mean, I thought she saw a bee or a wasp to tell you the truth, but she was just getting frustrated. And so she, she hops off the, off the couch and she runs and I was like, okay, that's the end of that scene. Let's move on to the next. She's not coming back, but she came back and she sat down next to him and she goes, okay, you're not making any sense. So then she asks him, um, she says, are you, are you ready for marriage? And he says, yes, I've been ready since I was 17 years old. Are you ready for marriage with me? And then he says, absolutely not. And I'm just like, Zach, why? It, it, was, it was confusing. And I think, you know, Michaela probably had every right. I mean, it's not like going in a linear way. He's just like, <sighs> I don't know. I, I, I didn't get it either. I didn't, I was just as confused as Michaela was. And so Michaela tells him, you know, well, if you're not happy with me, then just go leave, get up, go away. And I think he got up and he, and he left, I think. So I can understand her frustration. Maybe she can express her frustrations in a little bit more calm, calmer way or a little bit more mature way. And I think with Zach, her explosions and her overreactions to things and her drama, her dramatics is what kind of turns him off. I think he's okay with her disagreeing. You know, of course you have to be. But I, I think maybe the, whenever she just kind of is just so over dramatic and she gets like crazy. I think that's what frustrates Zach with Michaela. So let's put a pin on that. Let's move on from that. Bow and Mik okay. So then, okay. So bow Michaela. So when Zach left, when he got off the couch and left, um, I guess, uh, bow came to talk to Michaela. And, um, uh, bow was trying to tell Michaela to be more patient with Zach um, and that um, she was basically trying to be really positive, um, trying to convince Michaela, you know, to keep working at her marriage with, with Zach, that they are really good for each other. And she tells Michaela, you know, um, you and Zach are a lot further than some of us. You know, y'all are, are actually at that love stage. And um, of course, you know, comparing them to her and Johnny where they're not even at a like stage. And so she was encouraging her just to kind of stick it through. And Bao has such a very calming way of talking and she's very logical and um, she's very straightforward. And it's, it was just so, to hear her talk was very, very relaxing and encouraging. And Michaela really did appreciate the talk that she had with Bao. Then they play games. Okay, so moving on. They, then they start playing games. And they play married at first, most likely, like who's most likely to do this, who's most likely to do that, so on and so forth. So, oh, I just got a notification that, um, I think it was, was it Tommy DeBarge? Tommy DeB 